Hi everyone, excuse the mess, it's uh, Marzipan's on the heart and I'm doing interior renovations. This uh, video is about frequently asked questions about cruising. Hi, I'm Alan Stokal and this is Budget Boat Cruising, where we answer your questions about cruising on a private boat. To be clear, this channel is for people cruising on a small boat that they are the crew and they do their own cooking and maintenance. If this interests you, during the episode we will have cards in the upper right to uh, link you to other videos and channels and at the end we'll give you links to a few videos that will help you. First question, what is cruising? Now, some people use their boats uh, like they might use a recreational vehicle. Um, a few are on an extended cruise for years, and more and more tend to cruise for a couple of weeks of the year. As you can imagine, this takes a certain commitment of funds, time, and skills, as well as some specially laid out vessels. Is cruising expensive? That's a tough question. It is possible to cruise very inexpensively, but most people prefer a certain amount of, shall we say, comfort. Uh, let's say if you're currently uh, taking an offshore vacation every year, you definitely can't afford uh, to have a boat and cruise. What kind of a boat will I get? The boat will depend on your budget and your lifestyle. But let's just say ballpark, for less than about $5,000, you can buy a used 30-foot sailboat or maybe a 25-foot motor cruiser, depending on whether you want to use the wind for propulsion or you want to buy that expensive fuel. Where can I find these boats? Online ad sites such as Craigslist or here in Canada, Kijiji, have a wide selection. You can also try free-boats.com if you uh, uh, live near a marina or a boat club try going to uh, their bulletin board or just have a look in their yard um, if you're willing to spend up a bit you may want to go to a, a, a yacht broker uh, they can offer lots of good advice and also probably get you better boats now here's a quick look at a video we posted in 2016 on how to get a boat for free. Our critics are afraid that there's no such thing as a free boat. Although the boat may be free, everything else will cost you. Well, imagine that your parents left you a house in their will. Does that mean you won't have to pay land taxes, electricity, water, or gas? No, of course not. But you can still say the house was free. Now here's a good example of a free boat. This is a magnificently restored 1968 36-foot Chris Craft. The owner has spent thousands doing a total restoration including West Marine epoxy on the hull. He'll give you this boat. All you have to do is pay for storage for the winter and the launch in the spring. Oh, and there's just one more thing the owner didn't expect and you should know. Both the engines have cracks in the blocks, rendering them useless for anything other than a boat anchor. Okay, so you've got five seconds to decide, will you take this boat? Time's up. Well, the days of serious cruising on twin-engine V8s is pretty much over because of gas prices. You'd be lucky to get a liter per minute from these gas guzzlers, and a fill-up would be well over $500. Would I buy it? Not for cruising, but many people use these boats as floating cottages, so paying the storage and having the boat towed to your favorite marina may not cost, cost much more than $3,000. Not bad for a luxurious floating cottage with loads of room. Now at the end of this video, I'll offer you some free resources to help you find that perfect boat. 
Here's a boat in a boatyard in Maryland I saw on freeboat.com. Uh, they're giving away a 1978 Pen Yan 26, a 1971 Morgan 30, a 1977 Columbia 28, a 1991 Baylighter uh, 31, and a 1966 Stevens and Sparkman Sailmaster 22. Now, state law requires that they that they charge a hundred dollars to transfer ownership, but they'll launch it or put it on your trailer for free. So yes, the boat and the launch is free. The ownership transfer, fuel, insurance, docking fees, and everything else that comes with boat ownership is not. We'll continue in a moment, but if you were finding this episode helpful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe and ring the ship's bell to be notified next time we post a video. How do you know if you can afford a boat? Good question. We'll tell you how to get a free budget in an Excel file that will help you decide. We recently posted a video on how to afford both a boat and a car that might interest you. We also have posted links below. There are tons of other videos on this channel that will help you decide if you want to join a club or go to a marina, how to plan a cruise, and even what to eat and what to wear. We'll link to those later. Where can I keep my boat? Well, if you can trailer it and store it at home, then you can afford far more boat and much less on mooring fees. There are advantages of clubs over marinas and marinas over clubs. Check this out. Where are you going to keep your boat? Congratulations, you finally have the boat of your dreams. Now, where are you going to keep it? If you're lucky enough to live where the water doesn't freeze, you can just keep it in the water year-round. Even then, you'll have to decide where to dock it. If you own waterfront property that's sufficiently protected from bad weather, you can keep it there. The rest of us will have to pay. There are marinas and boat clubs. So in this episode of Budget Boat Cruising, we're going to look at both sides of the docking issue. clubs, or yacht clubs as they are also known, are usually clubs owned by the members. You have to pay to a fee to join and sometimes get on a waiting list. Some of these clubs are quite exclusive and expensive. I believe it was Groucho Marx who said that he would refuse to join any club that would have him as a member. There are pros and cons to club membership. Some clubs charge a minimal joining fee and you must commit to working a number of days in the year at the club. Members share common equipment such as pump outs and cranes. The clubhouse may have a kitchen where you can make some food and there's probably showers, washing and drying facilities. Clubs like this allow you to bring your own bottles of wine or beer as there is no formal dining room. People join these working clubs, as they are known, to share, for camaraderie, and perhaps to race. Other clubs may have a bar and a dining room with a liquor license. You may be required, as part of your membership, to spend the minimal amount each month in the bar or dining room. The club could have employees to do some or all of the work you might normally do yourself on your boat. I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. If you plan to cruise extensively, keep in mind that all clubs have reciprocals, that is, an arrangement with other clubs where members can stay for free or very cheap at the other member's club. Each club have their own rules, but often they reflect the rules your club 
has on reciprocals. So check it out. The other option is marinas. Marinas are usually privately owned for-profit businesses that cater to the boater both transient, that is staying for a night or two, and seasonal. There's usually no dining room, but there might be a snack bar. There's usually no clubhouse, although they may provide sheltered area for socializing. If you want to drink, you bring your own. You will pay for each service you require, although packages of services such as haul-out and storage are available. The cost of uh, most marinas is similar to working clubs, only there is no upfront joining fee. Most marinas charge per foot, that is by the length of your boat, often with a minimum. At my marina, the minimum charge is for 30 feet. My boat's 26. So, if I were to generalize, I would suggest that you should uh, check out all your options in your area. But in general, marinas are the cheapest in the short term, then working clubs in the longer term. If you are a budget boater, you may want to stay away from yacht clubs, unless you want to meet someone rich. How about maintenance and insurance? Boat insurance is relatively cheap. It cost me about $400 for a 10,000 K boat uh, with contents and about 2 million in liability insurance. Maintenance, well, if you do it yourself, it's relatively inexpensive, but boat parts don't come cheap. If you hire someone to do the work, it can get very expensive. Outboard motors as a rule are cheaper and easier to maintain than inboards. You'll spend less on fuel with sailboats or a single engine power boat. The cost of maintaining a boat goes up with the boat's length and the number of systems involved. I started out with a 22-foot sailboat and a 6-horsepower outboard. Chances of things going wrong? Well, we did manage to pop a shroud once. Uh, my current boat has fridges, autopilot, GPS navigation, VHS radio, on and on and on. The more systems, the greater the chance of one failing. You probably have lots more questions, so post them below in the comments section. I'll try to answer them. I can send you that boat budget if you email me at the address below. My name is Alan Stokel, and thank you very much for watching.